All right, so I'm gonna use the, the still life as my subject here. You can see, I'm gonna turn my light on, a little more light. You can see that I've done just a couple of layers already, right? So I started with what was behind everything first, right? So obviously that was my bird picture, right? That I printed out and I put that behind everything. So you always, in watercolor, you wanna start with what's kind of behind and lightest in a painting like this, right? In a tripod painting, you're looking at the back first and then you're working your way up. So I painted that bird first, right? So this is my bird picture. Um, I also, for the purpose of showing you guys, did some of the cardboard box, right? So this is the bottom of the box, this is the back of the box. So I put some matte color on there and then I'm gonna demo today a little bit of cast shadow from a couple of objects because we want to remember that we're building up layers of cast shadow on top of objects that we've already painted. And then the details in the smallest of objects and the most saturated colors and the darkest of colors, that's all stuff that's going to happen towards the end of the painting, right? One reason that I painted my little hanging paintbrush here is to show you that I would paint that first before I painted the cast shadows underneath it in an object like this where it's easy to do that. But I'm going to show you an example of a couple of cast shadows where it would actually be easier to paint the cast shadows first rather than painting them after I paint the object. And that is going to be this, these red ribbons. Now, if you guys remember what I put on the red ribbons here, anyone recall? I know masking fluid. Yeah, I know Jess is a fan of masking fluid, <laughs> um, just, just like me. So I painted these red ribbons that were in my still life. I'm going to switch over here to your to a view here. These red, red ribbons I painted out with masking fluid because those are going to be really difficult to paint around, especially when I did the, the bird painting, right? I don't want to have to paint around and stop at these red ribbons. I was able to flow right through them, right, with the painting of the bird picture. So, the, you know, those kind of decisions, you'll, you'll get more practice with making those as, as you know, as you use the, the masking fluid. So if I take grab my palette here, so are you not supposed to put the edges of the box? You certainly do not have to put the edges of the box. Um, I chose not to put the edges of the box because I don't feel like the box is, is all that interesting. Okay. The, the stuff in the box is what I kind of wanted to, to focus on. And so I kind of zoomed in a little bit on my kind of favorite area of the box. So it's not like the box itself has to be some kind of finished art project. It's really meant to create your subject matter for your painting. And the painting is really the ultimate, you know, that's the artwork, okay? So the box construction, the scene that you make, is much more about just kind of making a subject matter for the painting. Does that make sense? Yeah. So yeah, you don't you don't have to worry about like the frame of the box or painting the box itself. It's just kind of a structure. So I'm going to do a couple of cash shadows and one one that I want to include if I jump jump back to they're from the ribbon, right? These little shadows that are cast from the ribbon. So I'm going to go ahead and put some of those in there because those are gonna be much easier to do while I have the masking fluid on the ribbon shape, okay? Because it, you know, just, just makes it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I'm gonna take a little bit of my ultramarine blue. I have a pretty dirty palette right now. And because I noticed that those shadows were fairly cool, I'm using more of the blue than the brown, but I have a little bit of, of the uh, burnt umber in there with my ultramarine blue. I'm going to take that color, and it's fairly transparent. I have to be able to see my picture here. Pull that up again. 
And that little bit of cast shadow that moves from the ribbon onto the bird picture underneath it. Kind of does something like that. And then falls onto the cardboard box. I'm gonna take my brush while it's still wet. I'm gonna pull out the end of that shadow just a little bit. But I'm also gonna go back to my paint and pick up just a little more of that shadow color and just drop it in right at the edge of that shadow. So I want it to be darkest right where the ribbon meets that picture and then it kind of fades off as it moves away, right? So you have that kind of illusion of cat shadow that gradually gets, gets lighter as it moves off in that. Um, away from the, the ribbon. Let's do another one. I've got another one that happens right here where the ribbon kind of overlaps that bird painting or picture. It almost looks like one of the bird feathers, right? So it gets a little bit confusing. But I'm going to do that same thing. I'm going to put that kind of cast shadow shape where the ribbon touches the bird picture. And obviously you notice that I have already painted the bird, so I'm painting right on top of it. And the ribbon makes contact with the picture there and then casts another shadow here. And then that one really fades off really lightly. So quickly, I'm gonna blot my brush and pick up the end of that shadow, right? So that it really fades off. But I'm gonna re-emphasize the end of it so that it gets nice and dark right up against the ribbon. Right, so here's where these cast shadows get really super dark, right close to the ribbon shape, but then fade off as they as they move move away from it. I'm gonna do maybe one more, maybe a couple more shadows to show you from the other objects what might be helpful to add. You've also noticed that I've taken just a little bit of liberties in terms of the spacing of the objects. I also took out this the green star. So I made a couple of compositional changes since I took the picture. But one thing I want to I want to keep adding. If I look at the shadow from a couple of the other objects, one thing I want to do is the shadow from the beads, right? So the green beads that are hanging in front are casting a shadow that moves right down here in the middle. Right, right down through the middle of my picture. I've also got a cast shadow from the card that's suspended that's right here. And then I've got this really dark cast shadow underneath my paintbrush, okay? So let's do a couple of those. One thing I wanna think about for the, the bead shadow is the bead shadow is a little bit softer and more faint because these I think are further away. Right, so they're kind of up in the front. So I'm gonna mix up my shadow, my ultramarine blue, touch of brown. And I'm gonna go ahead and put in the cast shadow. I'm gonna skip that part at the top because I haven't painted in my box color up there yet. But let's go ahead and put in some kind of vaguely bead-like shapes. And then as it starts to get down here toward the bottom, it starts to become a lot less distinct. And then really kind of fades off here quite a bit. And in my painting, I have a lot less space between that ribbon shape. And while this is still wet, what I'm gonna do is to go back with, with a blotted brush 
and kind of move along the edges of those shapes a little bit just to blend them out. And I'm also picking up a little bit of the saturation of those colors. I don't really want it to be quite that dark. Keep blotting my brush and I'm moving around them. I want them to be vaguely circular, but I don't want hard edges around those shapes. And I'm gonna make sure that my, blush, my brush is really dry. And this time, take a little more off of the edges to kind of fade the edges out. And then if I feel like they're still too distinct, I'm also gonna take my, if I can find my flat brush, take my flat brush and I'm gonna pull down on that shadow a little bit just to soften it even more. And I also want to be careful not to overwork the, you know, to overwork the paper. Because when you start to overwork it, that's when, you know, you start to get into um, kind of an, an unnatural effect. So I think one thing that will happen is the more that I add darker colors to the other parts of the painting, the more those shadows, you know, will start to kind of move, move backwards, right? So these kind of distinct edges, again, you can blur those out and the more they bother you, just simply go back with your slightly damp brush and soften those out a little bit. Try not to, to overwork. You don't want to scrub the paper, but you can certainly kind of go back and soften those as you need to. So that's one example of a cast shadow from something that's going to be, you know, pretty dark, right? Those greens are going to be almost a black in some places. So I want to have some indication that they're in front and that shadow is, is hitting that paper behind them. So let's do this. Let's do this cast shadow. Let's see if I fit everything here. Let's do this cast shadow that is underneath the paintbrush, right? So I've got my paintbrush here, right? So I actually did finish painting that shape, but there might be a couple more details that I could add to it. For example, the texture of the bristles on the brush, I could put a few lines in there, right? To kind of indicate those a little more. But again, that's a second layer. I've painted the basic colors. So if I added something like that detail, I could mix up that kind of yellow ochre use that same yellow ochre color, but I've added just a little bit of blue and brown to it to make it slightly darker. And I could start to add details like the, the strands of the brush, the texture of the brush. That get just a little bit darker in some places, more pronounced. But that's a second layer that I, you know, that I've added on top of that color that I've already painted, right? Not a lot of color there, but I'm adding a second layer of kind of the, that detail of that texture, okay? So those kinds of textures you want to put on as a second layer on top of the color of the object that you've already painted, okay? So don't feel like, you know, all the description of something like those textures has to happen the first pass, right? Think about those as second layer details. Okay, let's go back to our cash shadow here. So again, I've got the, the color of the picture painted already, which is kind of light blue. And then on top of that, I'm gonna be adding that cast shadow, right? So you see how my finger is casting a shadow there? Look at the, the temperature of that shadow. And if I look at that with the picture compared to the picture, 
there's going to be a, maybe just a little more brown in the one I'm looking at. So I'm going to add just a little more of that burnt sienna to my shadow. Still a good amount of blue in it. And what I notice is that the shadow really starts up here towards the corner of that little framed photograph. And then maybe extends down this way. Even though that shadow is pretty, it's pretty dark, um, I can still see the color of what's underneath it, right? It's still somewhat transparent. I'm blotting my brush. I'm taking the edge of my brush and moving it around the edge of my shadow that I just painted. And just feathering that out just a little bit. So this shadow color, right, is pretty dark. I mean, the value of it is fairly dark, but I can still see some of that color underneath it, right, of the, the you know, the, the color of that blue of the photograph. So I've added this cast shadow, I've added this cast shadow, and it's good that if I'm looking at my, at my photograph, this is much darker than this one is. Okay, so there is a definite difference in terms of the value of those two shadows. And that, that's a good thing because it, it makes the, the other object feel slightly further away, right? So those differences in distance are important to kind of to keep. All right, so I've got a couple of cast shadows there. Let's do one more on something that has a different color. And if we look at the, the color of this box, obviously I've got some browns in it, but also yellow ochre. Yellow ochre is a really handy color. What I'm going to do is I can take some of that same yellow ochre and I can add some, some ultramarine blue and some raw umber to it to create a dark version of that shadow. Or I can simply use the ultramarine blue mixed with my dark blue, my dark brown, my raw umber, and if I mix the blue again with the burnt umber, I'm mixing up a coolish, transparent shadow wash. And then with that, I'm going to add the, let's add the cast shadow under the kazoo, and then that little one under the beads down here. So if I start with, it's not a big one, so I'm going to add and use my small brush. And if I were doing this whole painting, I probably would, I'd probably paint the kazoo first and then do this cast shadow. But for the purpose of our demo here, I wanted to, to show you a slightly different color. So the shadow kind of goes along the length of the kazoo and then the shadow of the beads kind of happens somewhere around here. There's one. There's another one. And because I don't necessarily want them to read as completely black, I'm going to lift that color just a little bit. Soften the edges just a little bit. And so that it still feels like I can see some of that brown, kind of yellow ochre color underneath it. but I still have a fairly deep value uh, of that shadow underneath. 
Right, so if I take a look at the, I can turn it here. If I take a look at the value of that shadow, it is pretty dark, right? The photograph, the shadow in the photograph looks almost black, but I still want some of that original kind of yellow ochre color to show through, right? I've already painted that, so I'm laying the shadow right on top of it. So if I were to keep painting, obviously I'd be painting these other objects in. There would be other cast shadows to include, but probably the, the most fun part is gonna be taking the masking fluid off of this red, these red ribbons and then painting that red color in those shapes because that's gonna provide a really nice kind of pop of color, right? Saturated red color. And I'm gonna have the differences between the red where it's in the light and the red where it's you know a little bit darker, right? So it moves in and out of space. But I'll already have those little bits of cast shadow in place, right? And as they dried, they got just a little bit lighter, right? So you can see them, they're slightly less pronounced now. So hopefully that helps a little bit in terms